Hello, I'm Tim Smith with the Adams County Historical Society, and welcome to another episode of Monuments Monday. And today, we're going to talk about the 11th Pennsylvania Infantry and Sally the War Dog. As a tour guide, when you take families around the battlefield, you're always trying to find a way to engage kids. So this, over the years, has been one of the more popular monuments uh, to be pointed out on battlefield tours, especially on the first day's battlefield. A lot of times with kids, I gotta tell you, I usually don't come out to this area of the battlefield. I take them to a tower, like on Co-op's Hill. But, um, it is a great story. So the 11th Pennsylvania Infantry, they were committed by uh, Colonel Richard Coulter. Uh, he was from Greensburg in Westmoreland County. But this regiment actually, on the side of it, it tells us they were recruited in Lycoming County, Luzerne, Northumberland, Montour, Westmoreland, Cumberland, Allegheny, Carbon, and Dolphin Counties. So they represented uh, a large amount of the state. But when they were in training, uh, this unit uh, sort of uh, adopted a small dog as their mascot, who eventually, of course, is named Sally. There are several sources for the story of Sally the War Dog. And, um, you know, it's, there's a lengthy account of Sally the War Dog in the Gettysburg Compiler in 1910. And, of course, there's um, some uh, contemporary accounts of Sally, and she's mentioned in some of the accounts associated with the members of the regiment. But in the 1960s, uh, John Lippy, who owned a tailor shop here in Gettysburg, became very interested in this story. So he wrote a book called The War Dog. And the Adams County Historical Society has several copies of The War Dog. This one is, uh, came out uh, in 1962, and it's actually signed by Lippy in 1963, to, who was then the president of the Adams County Historical Society. And we have this um, flyer in our collection that was placed in storefronts around town advertising um, the sale of this book. And uh, it is an amazing book. You can probably find it on eBay or another um, internet site and pick up a copy of it and read it if you want. It's a poem, really. But in the beginning, they have the story laid out as researched by John Lippy. And I just wanted to read you a few passages here. Um, according to the passages in Lippy's book, and again, a lot of this information to con confirmed by other sources that are earlier that we have written about the story. But uh, one thing you might uh, be curious about, uh, during the war there were several times when uh, Sally had puppies, that she had litters. And um, they said, um, more than once during her career, Sally found herself in a blissful state. Four times more than once, to be exact, but she never let her family interfere with her profession. No matter where the blessed event took place, or when the puppies were born, or how many there were, her sense of responsibility lay with the army. And early on, she began to train with the soldiers when they marched, and she went in line of battle with them onto the various fields that they fought. At Cedar Mountain, she stood bravely under fire for the first time. At Bull Run, she struck close by the regimental colors. At Centerville, she fell back only when the men fell back. At Chantilly, she remained in the midst of the regiment. Sally never had to be coddled or cared for. She endured what the men endured. She suffered when they suffered. She hungered when they hungered. She stuck it out through thick and thin, through lean and fat through good and bad. Um, there are several interesting accounts of her in battle. At Antietam, she was determined to join the fray and dashed out with one of the skirmishers into the cornfield. He tried to drive her to the rear, fearing she would be killed. But if his efforts were in vain, Sally wouldn't retreat without her regiment. 
during the battle, a ball actually struck her in the side. But fortunately, it only creased a mark through her hair, leaving the flesh unbroken. And of course, on the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg, she was right here with the regiment against Iverson's brigade. And then later, when the Southern Army reinforced the Confederate line and hit this position, the regiment was driven back across the fields and through the town. During the retreat, Sally became separated from her outfit and was unable to locate the position of her regiment. Refusing to pass through the rebel lines, Sally returned to the crest of the hill where the regiment had been engaged. There, she seated herself amongst her dead and dying comrades, and she did not budge from that spot during the whole of the three-day engagement. Sally licked the wounds of those that could not move, and she guarded the lifeless bodies of those who had fallen. Not for one moment did she desert her post. After the battle was over, Captain Cook of the 12th Massachusetts discovered Sally while she was still on detail with the Provost Guard in search of stragglers and prisoners. After the wounded had been removed to the hospital, Sally permitted herself to be taken to the brigade headquarters. Throughout her three-day vigil, the little dog went without food and probably without sleep. She was weak and emaciated from the enforced fast. To everyone who had witnessed the violence and fury of the battle, it seemed a miracle that she could have survived. It was purely conjecture as to why she wasn't struck by a bullet, why she wasn't wounded by an exploding shell, why she wasn't captured, or why she wasn't slain by the passing enemy troops. Certainly, her battle sense and her tenacity for living served her good stead, as well as almost unbelievable luck. Now, eventually, this her, um, heroics of Sally caught up with her. And um, on February 6th, 1865, um, the regiment was involved uh, at a battle uh, along the Weldon Railroad in Petersburg. And uh, according to a letter, written on February 11th, 1865, by one of the men of the regiment. Poor Sally fell in the front lines in the fight at the run. A bullet pierced her brain. She was buried where she fell by some of the boys, even while under a murderous enemy fire. And Lippy ends the description of her like this. It might seem strange to some people that battle-hardened soldiers would risk their lives while under a murderous enemy fire to take time to give burial to a mere dog. The truth is that the men of the 11th Regiment of Pennsylvania Volunteers, Sally was not a mere dog. She was their mascot, their friend, and their comrade in battle. She was their war dog. And so I just find it fascinating that these men decided to memorialize her on their regimental monument. And, you know, today uh, you see a bunch of cars going by while we're talking. People stop here and oftentimes people leave tributes to Sally on the statue. It's kind of controversial. I have friends that get upset anytime somebody puts a dog biscuit or leaves cookies or some such a dog food near Sally's monument. But um, it is one of the most popular monuments on the battle and one of the most visited. One other thing, uh, in one of the accounts, it said that Sally hated three things. Women, rebels, and Democrats. 